And we're going to talk about what faith is. Amen. And I done got all talking about electronics. I don't know where I done went to. I done ended up in Genesis 1. Let me get back down. Oh, shucks. This thing ain't want to act right. They ain't want me to be able to read the scripture. Philemon, that ain't where we are. We're in Hebrews, right? Well, you know what? I'm just not going to worry about the scripture. Y'all got it up there. My iPad is just doing some of everything. Won't take me to where I need to go. Yeah. So we're going to talk about Abraham, a man of faith, and the importance of faith in the life of all believers, and especially in our lives. When we look at Abraham, there's some things that I'd like to share about him as we see Abraham and what characterizes Abraham as the man of faith that he is. We know that Abraham is the father of the faithful, right? Amen. That's the label that he has been given biblically. He is the father of the faithful. And there are some things, some features in Abraham's faith that we see. There are some things that shows that he is a man of faith. And there's a pattern, a picture that Abraham paints for us that will help us as we walk this path of faith. Amen. He shows us a pattern of life of faith in that we should be able to exhibit and follow after it's interesting when you look at abraham in this abraham do anybody know we we sing about him at vbs we talk about him all the time uh everybody know the song father abraham he had many sons many sons had father abraham yeah we know that abraham he's the father of the faithful that we are the sons we are the children because his seed was blessed as great as the um, sand on the seashore, that through him all nations would be blessed. It is through him that we find that blessing through Christ Jesus, who is the Christ, who is the Lord, the Savior. But when we look at Abraham, it begins with Abraham. And there's some things I want us to look at. I probably won't get through all of these, but that's okay. Hopefully we'll get enough that will help us to understand. As, as it relates to faith, number one, there's the pilgrimage of faith. It is the pilgrimage of faith. That means it starts. It starts somewhere, and it says, by faith, verse 8, by faith, Abraham, when he was called, obeyed by going out to a place which he was to receive for an inheritance. And he went out not knowing where he was going. So that's how it starts. It says, by faith, when Abraham was called, Abraham went. He started that pilgrimage. He started his journey. And how many know the life of faith is a start of a journey? We're all on that journey right now, whether you know it or not. Amen. It began when we heard God call, when we heard his call. And the call that God made to us was the call of salvation, right? We understand that there is no walk with God without a walk in salvation. Salvation begins that walk with God for all of us. And we're saved because we heard God's call. We heard that call that starts that pilgrimage. What is the pilgrimage? The pilgrimage is the separation that Abraham made with who he was and his world, right? It says he obeyed by going out. So he had to go out to somewhere. Yeah. He went out from somewhere. Yeah. And that's how it is with us. He went to a place which he would or was to receive for an inheritance. Yeah. But it says that he didn't even know when, what, why, or how. Right. But he just obeyed God. How many know you ain't got to know the whole plan? Yeah. You ain't got to know the plan. You just got to know the man. You got to hear his voice yeah. and know it's his. You ain't got to understand all of it. And the fact of the matter is, we don't hardly understand all of what we should understand Amen. about things that are natural. So we know we can't understand everything about the supernatural. But it says Abraham, by faith, when he was called, he obeyed. 
He was clueless. He didn't understand. He had no concept, no idea of where God was calling him to or where God was taking him to. He didn't know about Canaan. I mean, he didn't get a brochure. He didn't surf the web. He didn't get look on Travelocity. He wasn't looking for a vacation spot. He didn't have a map to see what it was like and how to get there. What was the terrain going to consist of? How was the area going to be? What? No, he didn't have any of that. As a matter of fact, he was clueless. But he did hear God's call. He didn't understand it, but he heard it. He didn't understand it, and that's what faith is. You don't have to understand it. Faith says, I might not understand it, but God, I hear you. I don't know why. I don't know how. I don't know what. I don't know why. All I know is who. Amen. Amen. That's where it starts. Abraham was a lot like us. He was a pagan. You know what that is, right? Abraham was not a child of God when God called him. Abraham was not one that was seeking God when God called him. Amen. You do know that, right? Amen. Abraham was not looking for God when God called him. No, no. Abraham was a pagan. Not only was he a pagan, but he was... Uh, uh, his father was Tehran and... Tehran was a follower of many gods. So Abraham grew up not in a monotheistic, but a polytheistic religion, uh, a place of religion. In other words, where Abram was, Abram before Abraham, where Abram was, was a place that worshipped many gods. But they did not worship the true God. You know, a lot of people worship many gods. I heard you this morning, Martin, talking about the different things. Those are very small gods that people worship. Very small. But Abraham did not, Abraham did not worship the true God. But he worshiped many gods. He was a pagan. Land of Ur of the Chaldees. He was there. That's where he was living. That's where his family lived. He came out of uh, paganism. That's where he uh, existed. That was his culture. That was his mindset. That was his life. Amen. He was living his life. Yeah. And God called him. He was not seeking God. It never says that Abraham was seeking after God. And that's why I want to tell you Christians, get off the high horse because you think you're all that and God needed you. No, he didn't. You needed God. You know, God, he didn't see in Abram anything but paganism. He came from Shem, the line of Shem. Pag uh, Abram is from the people that was separated at the Tower of Babel. He was from that people that was confused because they came from a line that tried to exalt themselves and, 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 and build a a ladder to God and become like God and God confused him. That's where he comes out of. Abram's 70 years old. So he's lived that life a while. But God, say but God. God called him. Look at what Isaiah 51 and 1 says. He said, you who pursue righteousness, you listen to me. You want to pursue righteousness? He's asking a question. You seek the Lord? Then he says this. Look to the rock from which you were hewn. And the quarry from which you were dug. What is he saying about Abraham and Sarah? This is what he's saying to them. Is that God pulled and picked you out of a rock he you were hewn out you was dug out of a pit god did it you didn't come out god did it god reached in and brought you out 
And our act in that part of faith is we believe God and do what God says. Amen. Abraham was no different than you. He was no different than me. He was a pagan, but God touched him. He was unregenerated, but God regenerated him. What does that mean? God saved him out of he, where he was and God saved you and God saved me out of where you are you are and all that I was a sinner for the Bible says for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God the Bible says that the wages of sin is death that means that's what we get paid for who we are and what we do but the gift from God is eternal life and how do we get that because the sin debt it did not get just thrown away discarded God just didn't forget about it no God judged that sin because the wages of sin is death God who cannot lie and will not change has to stand on what he said so instead of you paying that debt his son paid that debt listen sin was still paid death still paid the price of sin the wages was death and Jesus took that for you and for me God didn't change his mind when he said the wages of sin is death he didn't change that God does not change. Amen. Amen. That was a praise place, but I'll take three little hand claps that we got for that. But I don't know about you, but I thank God for looking past my fault and meeting my need. I thank God that while I was a sinner, he looked down and he looked past my fault. I thank God that he touched me when I was running wide open on my way to hell where I deserve to be but God touched me and he grabbed me and he rescued me that's why the old saints in their prayer say he lifted me he picked me up out of a horrible pit out of the Murray clay because I couldn't get out but God he lifted me yeah He was a sinner. He belonged to a pagan family, a pagan culture, a pagan city. Lived there a while and got acclimated to it at 70. You, you're pretty comfortable in your surroundings when you're 70. I, I imagine it ain't there yet, but I imagine you, you're probably comfortable in your situation because I ain't there yet, but I was comfortable in my situation at 25. But we see the grace of God. In Abram, the father of the faith, we see the grace of God. Because God did not pick him because he was great. God did not pick him because he was good. God did not pick him because he was moral. God picked him because he wanted to. God can take nothing and do something with it. That's the God we serve. I mean, he can. Y'all do know that, right? Because the Bible begins like in the beginning, God. And we know that God stepped out of nowhere, stood on nothing, and spoke. And now look at what we got. God took dust. Not even, it didn't say he took the dirt. Dust. And I wonder if that's intentional because you can't even buy dust. Ain't no price tag on dust. You ride down the road, you see dirt for sale. Anybody ever seen a sign that said dust for sale? I'm just asking. Right. You might have been places I hadn't been. Seen things I haven't seen. But I've never seen a sign that said dust for sale. You, Martin? I know you go a lot of places. You ain't seen it. Anybody? But God took the dust and look at what he did. Look at what God can do with dust. <laughs> my, my, my. Grace. God's grace. You say, look at what he do with dust. Look at, look at what he does with us. God's grace. 
his amazing grace, his unmerited favor, his goodness that's overabundant, his mercy that overflows, his love that is unending. What a mighty God he is. Oh, my brothers and sisters, I'm talking about, I got to get back on Abraham being the father of the faithful, right? But it begins with the pilgrimage. He had to start somewhere. And I thank God that there was a start in my life. Amen. Not when the doctor popped me and I started crying, but when God touched me and I started praising. Yeah. I wish I had somebody in here. When we look at Abram, it doesn't say anything about his morality, Deacon Acre. No, it doesn't say anything about that, but it says a lot about his paganism. It speaks about where he came from and what he was surrounded by, his culture, but it doesn't say anything about his heart. Amen. You know why? Because it didn't matter. Because God doesn't care, because God can take a stony heart. And make it a heart of flesh. He can take a black heart. And bring life to it. Amen. Doesn't matter how it is. The heart can stop beating. And God can put life back into it. Because he's got the power. It's irrelevant whether he was moral or not. Because when God touched you. If any man be in Christ. He is a new creature. God is the one that gives life. The Bible says that you who were dead in your trespasses and sin, he had he had you, you have he quickened. God touched you and brought life to your death. Light to your darkness. Hope to your helplessness. Strength to your I'm just about done. That's one point. Y'all know I got six, right? I didn't tell y'all that. But I did say I probably wouldn't finish. Why is that? Because why did it not matter? Because it is God that justifies the ungodly. The ungodly does not justify themselves. Abraham responded with faith. He believed God and he left. Not only do we see the pilgrimage, we see the obedience. It says when God called him, he went. He went out not knowing where he was going. You know this journey, you got to obey. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Faith is believing and faith is obeying. Yeah. You might not understand it, but you believe God and you trust God. You obey him. It says that Abraham went out not knowing where he was going. But he, see faith is, faith will cause you to obey even when you don't understand. Do you know that Abram, when he left, he went in the wrong direction? Yeah. He went in the wrong direction. He went opposite of where the promise was. He didn't do it intentionally. See, he might not have been walking in the right direction, but he was walking in obedience because when God said go, he went. But see the thing about it, sometimes in following God, you make the wrong the, you make a wrong turn, right? But you're not making a wrong turn intentionally. Right. Say you don't make it intentionally, but it takes you out of the way. Yeah. And if you're going the wrong way, it's taking you out of the way, and it's gonna take you longer to get to where you're supposed to be, right? Amen. Anybody ever made a wrong turn? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, I can write a book on that one. He went to a place called Haran. Haran was five uh, miles away from in the wrong direction of where he was supposed to go. And it says that he, not five miles, but it took him, he was there for five years. He was there five years, not five miles. He was there five years in the wrong place. Can you imagine being in the wrong place? When you're trying to go in the right place. It's not like, I see, unlike Jonah, Jonah went in the opposite direction 
on purpose. Because Jonah was running away from God's word. He was running away from God's call. But Abraham was walking towards God's call. But he ended up going in the wrong direction. And spending time in that place. Can't you imagine the frustration of being in the wrong place and in the place that you know that you're not trying to go to and then for some reason you're stuck there? Ah, uh, no, you don't want to do that. But that's what happened with Abram. But the Bible tells us even in verse 9 and 10 of that same chapter, by faith, he lived as an alien in the land of promise, in a foreign land dwelling in tents. For he was looking for a city which has foundations, whose architect and builder is God. By faith, he lived as an alien. That's point number three, the patience. Faith is patient. You got to be patient. Now, Abraham, he ended up in the wrong place. And he stayed there for five years. But guess what? He got to the right place. Amen. <clears throat> you know why he got to the, to the right place? Let me tell you why he got to the right place. Because he, get, he did not settle when he was in the wrong place. Right. Amen. He got to the right place because he was patient. In his faith. You know how you get frustrated? Man, I done lost 30 minutes. Can you imagine losing five years? But he was patient. And he was persistent. Faith kept him going. Because he was looking for something. He had heard the voice and he's looking for the promise. So faith kept him going. That's what faith to do. Faith to keep you going even when you find yourself in the wrong place. Faith will keep you going even when you find yourself under problem and things are perplexed in your life and there's trouble and, and, and all kind of things happening and you're not in that place of blessing that you know you're supposed to be in but you don't quit, you don't throw in the towel, you don't give up on God. You continue because of faith. Faith keeps you going. That's what faith would do and he was patient. Because listen, this is the key to you and the key to me. We've got to look past the present and the temporal. Because the Bible says in verse 9 and 10, it says that he was looking for a city which has foundations, whose architect and builder is God. My brothers and sisters, if we're going to be persistent in faith, we've just got to believe that what God said, God's going to perform. And we've got to keep looking forward and not settling in the present. Amen. Amen. Now, Abraham, as we see, he never really saw what God promised in this life. But that don't mean he didn't receive the promise. But let me deviate for a few minutes. We all agree that Abraham is the father of the faithful. Show of hands. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And why do we believe that? Not because I said it, but because the. Okay. We're all there. Can we agree that Abraham exhibited strong characteristics of faith? Can we all agree with that? I mean, you know the ultimate test and the ultimate show of who Abraham was and where he was in his faith was when God told him to sacrifice his son. And Abraham got up, didn't tell Sarah. Because she'd have stopped that when she mamas. You ain't sacrificing my boy. But Abraham was going to do it because he believed God. That was the ultimate show of faith. Can we all agree that Abraham showed us the totality of faith? 
Can we all agree that Abraham began this walk with God when God called him? And when God called him, he began obeying the call of God and he left where God told him to leave from, going to where God was leading him to, though he didn't go the right way, but he ended up in the right place. We can all agree with that. Well, let me just throw this in to you so you'll understand something about faith and Abraham. We all agree that there is no better example in human form than Abraham. But even in his walk, we find that Abraham faltered. The father of the faithful, he faltered. We saw him sacrifice, lay Isaac on the altar, take the knife, and he's getting ready to come. And then the angel said, Abraham, stay your hand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But before that, shortly after his journey, God blessed him. Even when he was in Haran, God blessed him. Even though he was in the wrong place, God blessed him. God blessed him because Abraham was seeking the right thing. Listen to this. Abraham messed up. Because what happened is this. There was a famine. And out of fear and high concern, Abraham said, well, Egypt seems to be doing well. So we're going to Egypt until this famine passed. So we're going to go so we'll spare and we'll keep what we got and we'll survive the famine. But on that way, Abraham began to think. I imagine he, he is now. This is Abraham. He's, they're going. Then he looks over at his wife, Sarah, and he says this. Man, she's beautiful. She's very attractive. I mean, she's. So Abraham said, listen, Sarah, when we get there, we're going to tell Pharaoh that you're my sister and not my wife. Listen to what he said. Because I know as beautiful as you are that he's going to want you. And what he'll do, he'll kill me and take you. So what you need to do is tell him you're my sister so he'll favor me and save me. Abram was right. He was pretty smart, Costa. Uh, yeah. Poor Sarah. Like most women. Okay. He was willing to sacrifice his wife for his life. And that's not the way God called it. He was supposed to sacrifice his life for his wife's life. Why you suppose he did that? Because a falter in his faith. Because he, at one point, because of the circumstances that he would find himself in, because of the pressure and the problems, because of the fear, that his faith faltered. And he came up with this scheme. It was working. It was working because... Just like he said, Pharaoh saw her, and he calls, he said, whoa, all right, he's mine. Where's your husband? No, that's, I don't have a husband, I got a brother. So what Pharaoh did, he favored the brother, brother husband. So Abram received gifts from Pharaoh and blessings from Pharaoh because Pharaoh was trying to get favor with Sarah. 
or Sarai before she's changed. Abram did that. He faltered in his faith because of the pressure he felt that he was under. He, couldn't, he came up with a scheme, a lie, and it was working according to his plan. But guess what? It wasn't working according to God's plan. And I want to tell you, it was going good, and then Pharaoh was getting ready to do what he shouldn't have been doing, and God said, no, you're not. I got a plan, and you ain't going to mess it up. Pharaoh started having problems, and he, he understood. He went back. He said, Abram, what have you done? Why did you lie and say this was your sister and not your wife? Amen. Get out, get your stuff and get out of here. Amen. He faltered in his faith. That wasn't the only time he faltered in his faith. But I want to say this about that and I'm through. Even as people of God that follow God, yes, we falter in our faith. Amen. Yes, we fail in this walk sometimes, but the truth of the matter is we've got to know that God is still in control and we've got to continue walking in that path. That does not mean it's not going to slow us down, but it means that God is still going to be faithful to what he promised. And we need to understand that and not stay in our place of pity and stay in that place of pain, but we need to get up and thank God for his grace and mercy and his forgiveness and continue in the path and the promise because I want to tell you as a child of God God is always present with you don't worry about the dangers you might find yourself in and I know it's hard I'm just saying that but we do that anyway but the fact is you're never alone because God is always present with his people and I know I got some witnesses in here not only is God always present but God will provide you don't have to look to man to make provision. You don't have to try to figure out schemes with man. You don't have to lie and, and, and scheme and steal and kill. You don't have to do all that. You just need to know that God will provide. God is present. God will provide. God will lead you and guide you. You got to trust him anyway. We find that even when we see Abraham. When he failed, yes, there's failures in faith. That was the only time. And listen, you might have failed. No, let me change that. You failed. But I want to tell you, that's not the only time. You're going to fail some more. Your failure might not be my failure, faith. But you're going to fail some more. But you got to be persistent in your walk with God. And know that God is still with you. God is our constant friend. He is ever present. He will provide. God makes a way. God gives strength and power. God gives light and darkness. God makes a way out of nowhere. You can trust him even when you can't trace him. How many know God is a way maker? So Abraham, he trusted in himself. He, he failed at that moment to trust in God. And I want to tell you, in my life, there's been times that I failed because I failed to trust in God. And instead of leaning not to my own understanding, I would lean to my understanding. Instead of acknowledging him in all my ways, I would not acknowledge him and allow him to direct my path, but I'd walk in my own path. And I find myself with disappointments and pain. Fear has a way of messing us up. Fear has a way of slowing us down. Fear has a way of changing our minds. But that is the challenge that we face. We've got to trust God even when we can't trace him. Knowing that God is a way maker. When we look at Abraham, we can see the yes through the ups and through the downs. God was always faithful to him. Look at your neighbor and say, I know you might be in a place of pain. You might have some ups and downs, but you got to understand something. God is still present with you, and God is always faithful to you. You can trust him anyhow. Have I got a witness? It's ebb and flow. It's ups and downs, but you keep moving. 
Somebody said, I'm moving mighty slow. But I thank God I'm moving though. I might not be running wide open. But I'm moving. If I can't run, I'm going to walk. If I can't walk, I'm going to crawl. The one thing I'm going to do, I'm going to keep moving. I'm going to be persistent. Because I'm going to keep my eyes toward the prize. I know that one day it's going to come in my life. In this life, you're going to have ups and downs. In this life, you're going to have victories. But you're going to also have defeats. In this life, you're going to be able to shout. But in this life, you're going to have some tears to shed. In this life, you're going to be on the mountain. But every once in a while, you're going to be down in the valley. Every day is not going to be sunny. But you got to know that God is with you every day. He is Deacon Whitfield the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. Well, when I look at Abraham, I can say, yes, I can see God in his life. When I look at Abraham, I can see that he is the father of the faithful. But I'm encouraged when I look at Abraham because I also see that he faltered every once in a while and he fell down. And every once in a while we all fall down. Have I got a witness here? But I'm glad to tell you that as a child of God, if we fall down, we can get up again. Have I got a witness? And I know sometimes you may fall down and you don't feel as if you can get up. But I stop by to tell you your faith has to be in something more than your own ability. You've got to understand that when you can't, the God we serve can. Have I got a witness? Faith says that God can do what no other can do. I'm reminded now uh, of that in the life of Abraham. Uh, the Bible says uh, he was past, his wife Sarah was past the age of childbearing. Uh, and the truth is Abraham uh, wasn't all that interested uh, himself. Uh, but God through faith gave him the power uh, to be able to do what needed to be done. Uh, by faith God gave him power uh, to do what no man could do uh, because it was dead but yes it was dead uh, but God gave life uh, to that dead situation uh, you know what I'm talking about don't you um, he's able uh, to do something uh, in your dead situation um, you've got to learn uh, to trust him uh, you got to know he's able uh, the question is, is anything too hard for God? The answer is, that nothing too hard for God. Have I got a witness? I know sometimes you feel that the mountain's too high. I know sometimes you feel that the valley's too low. I know sometimes you feel that the pain's too intense. I know sometimes it seems like the situation is hopeless. But the God we serve, he's able. He's able. He's able. Do you know he's able? He's able to do what no other can do. Faith said, I'm going to trust in God. Trouble come and trouble go. I'm going to trust in God. In the nighttime, in the daytime, I'm going to trust in God. Sun shining, storm raging, I'm going to trust in God. In sickness, in health, I'm going to trust in God. I know he's able. He's sovereign in his power. He's awesome in his service. He's a great God with all power in his hand. 
what he do, no other can. He's able to lead me where he wants me to go. Take me where he wants me to be. Satan cannot deride it. The enemy cannot snatch it. Problems cannot destroy it. God is in control. He's sovereign. I don't like it, but I believe that all things work together for the good of them that love him. Have I got a witness? I'm crying inside, but I'm shouting on the outside because something on the inside began moving on the outside. I wish I had somebody that would catch on fire. He's a...